On May 24, 1989, on the Valdez, a third mate is on duty past his shift and realizes the calculated position of the ship is off. He orders hard right rudder and calls the captain, but before anything can be done, he grounds off Bly Reef. A total of 10.8 million gallons of oil were spilled. When an incident of this magnitude occurs, we want a detailed, comprehensive root cause analysis investigation. First, let's look at the root cause analysis you would get using media headlines. First headline is tanker spills 10.8 million gallons of oil. Here, we have an impact to the environmental goal because of the oil that has been spilled. Our second headline, tanks rupture and release oil when a ship grounds on Bly Reef. The cause of the oil being spilled was eight cargo tanks being ruptured. The tanks were ruptured because the ship grounded on Bly Reef. And our last headline, tanker captain legally drunk during spill. If you've heard anything about the Valdez oil spill, this is probably what you've heard, that there was alcohol in the captain's system at the time of the grounding. Conclusions were thus made that the ship grounded because the captain is drunk. Our resultant cause map, made based only on headlines, shows us that the oil is spilled because of ruptured tanks, the tanks ruptured because the ship grounds on Bly Reef, and the ship grounds because the captain had alcohol in his system. The solution, then, is to fire the captain, which in this case did happen fairly shortly after the incident. As previously mentioned, for an incident of this magnitude, we need to have a detailed, comprehensive investigation. Let's look at the cause map that we would get if we based it on the detailed government reports. I know you can't see the cause boxes, but this is a 115 cause box cause map that outlines details about the Valdez oil spill. The yellow boxes on this map are the boxes from our previous five box cause map. You'll see they now make up only a small portion of the cause map, and there is a great amount of additional detail that has been added. Here we are back to our five box cause map. We can add detail before, after, and between the cause boxes. These first three causes seem to fit pretty well. Our environmental goal is impacted because 10.8 million gallons of oil were spilled, and the oil was spilled because eight oil cargo tanks ruptured. However, let's look at the relationship here. The ship grounding on Bly Reef caused the eight oil cargo tanks to rupture. Let's see if we can add some detail in between these causes. The eight oil cargo tanks ruptured because of force applied to the hull and because of inadequate hull strength. Whenever something fails, it's because the forces applied are greater than the strength. In this case, the force on the hull was provided when the ship grounded on Bly Reef. The inadequate hull strength was because of a single hulled ship design. A solution that has been considered after the Valdez incident is to have double hulled ship. This is what our cause map looks like with the additional detail that we've just added. Let's look at the last relationship from our original cause map. This implies that a drunken captain steered a ship into the reef. This graphic shows Prince William Sound with the north and southbound traffic lanes. The green indicates the southbound traffic lane, and this is the direction that the Valdez would have been headed. The red indicates the northbound traffic lane. You can see the original plan for the Valdez would be to travel along the southbound traffic lane. The yellow shows the route of the Valdez. As you can see, it began in the southbound traffic lane, crossed over all traffic lanes, and well out of the traffic lanes before it grounded on Bly Reef. We want to add some de additional detail to understand how the ship ended up on Bly Reef. So we begin with the cause, ship grounds on Bly Reef. The ship grounds on Bly Reef because the vessel is outside normal traffic lanes, as we saw from the map on the previous slide. Additionally, the crew didn't realize the ship was too close to the reef. We know this is true because the ship didn't slow. We'll look at each of these causes in turn. First, let's look at why the vessel was outside normal traffic lanes. The vessel was outside normal traffic lanes because the ship was attempting to avoid ice. This is something that a lot of people don't know about when they look at the Valdez incident. Let's look at this map again. We have our traffic lanes and the route of the Valdez, but this is just showing the map of Prince William Sound, not the actual situation on the day of the Valdez grounding. Instead, Prince William Sound looked like this. As you can see, the glacial ice covered both the southbound and northbound traffic lanes and quite some distance outside both traffic lanes. So the Valdez was forced to leave both traffic lanes in order to get around the glacial ice. 
In addition to attempting to avoid ice, there was no warning to the ship from the Vessel Traffic Center. The Vessel Traffic Center would ordinarily provide a warning to a ship as they left the traffic lanes. Part of the reason for this was that the Vessel Traffic Center lost radar contact and the Vessel Traffic Center procedures were not followed. As we have mentioned many times in our webinars, we never stick with procedure not followed. We'll just add a question mark following this procedure is not followed so that we know that some more detail needs to be added to this area of the map. One of the solutions implemented after this incident was to increase the number of radar sites, allowing the Vessel Traffic Center to be able to better track vessels via radar. Now this portion of the cause map looks like this. We're going to add some detail onto why the crew didn't realize the ship was too close to the reef. The crew didn't realize the ship was too close to the reef because the position of the vessel was plotted incorrectly. The cause of the position of the vessel being plotted incorrectly was that the third mate was plotting and supervising. That meant that he plotted the position and verified that the position was correct. The reason that the third mate was performing both jobs was because of a reduced crew complement on the Valdez. In addition to this, the third mate was fatigued, again because of the reduced crew complement. In addition to the position of the vessel being plotted incorrectly, there was no radar indication of the reef. The reason for this was that the radar equipment on the Valdez was broken. One last issue, the sh crew did not realize the ship was too close to the reef because of insufficient supervision of the third mate. The captain was not on the bridge. In this case, the captain had alcohol in his system, which probably played into his decision not to be on the bridge. I do want to point out that the captain was found not guilty of piloting a vessel while intoxicated. We can add some solutions at this point that would have mitigated the risk of this Valdez oil spill. One of the solutions is not to transit the Prince William Sound at night. There's also a solution to require two watch officers on duty at all times. Another solution is to increase the crew size. A solution when you have equipment that is broken that is necessary for your ship to function is to fix the equipment. So another solution that we have is fix the radar. Going back to the five box cause map that we created based on media headlines, you will see if we had stopped at this oversimplified cause map, we would have missed the opportunity to make meaningful changes. Although it makes for a good sensational story to sell newspapers, it is not a solid cause and effect explanation. Blame, as has been doled out in the media for this incident, isn't going to help you solve the problem. Blame instead may lead you to fire the person that is deemed responsible for the incident. But by doing this, you may deprive your organization of the person who is best able to help you figure out what went wrong and fix it. 